started a death cult and all I got was this lousy hat and t-shirt. What up viewers, what up, what up, Calc Soups here and welcome to The Friend Zone, my monthly video game show where we discuss the latest games with my friends. Uh, <clears throat> this month we built our cult and slayed demons in Cult of the Lamb. Uh, we'll be discussing what you what we were expecting and how do we describe it, like we usually do. Uh, we'll talk about the uh, base building aspects of the game, um, you know, kind of layouts and, and rituals do we perform with our death cult, uh, any naming conventions we might have had. Um, and then we'll talk about the roguelike elements of the game, uh, you know, actually going into the uh, demon infested areas and, and playing through that. Um, we'll also talk about, you know, each of the different zones and maybe even some of the zones you could travel out when you weren't battling monsters. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the basing, the pacing of the game. Uh, we'll talk through the bosses um, and then we'll kind of wrap it up with our final thoughts. And without further ado, let's hop right in. Let's hop right in and introduce the friends. Introducing Kevin. Hey everybody, I'm Kevin. I'd like you to eat these mushrooms. Mm. And we've got Patrick. Hey, hey, I'm here to pick up your poop. Nice. All righty. Well, um, hopping right into it. Uh, what were we expecting and how would we describe it? Um, I <clears throat> thought that there was quite a bit of marketing for Cult of the Lamb that set expectations fairly well. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, and I, to be fair, I did, I did quite a bit of reading ahead of time as to like what this game was because mm -hmm. I was clearly targeted by whatever marketing algorithms uh, <laughs> thought I would enjoy it. Yes. It does seem um, like like a very you game. Yeah. 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 Uh, <clears throat> which is why we'll talk about it. I actually have had a fairly negative experience. Um, hmm. But uh, but yeah, I, I like the roguelike elements like kind of and even like even the like religious elements like I definitely got the Binding of Isaac vibe like that um yes yeah and, there's it yeah. definitely it definitely you can tell that like during conception and then the design process and, ev and everything like binding of isaac is definitely an inspiration yeah. you know there's sort of that was effectively what what i was expecting was something like binding of isaac meets animal crossing and that's not far from uh from what the conceit <clears throat> of the game is so yeah yeah, I saw a lot of articles talking about like, oh, it's Dark Animal Crossing, like, and that was like the main crux of the article, and I was like, eh, like, yeah, not really. And so, yeah, we'll we'll get into like, kind of the two two sides of the coin here, but, um, like, <clears throat> yeah, not not to bury the lead, but like, you know, halfway decent roguelike plus halfway decent, you know, base building, makes a in my opinion, like a, a semi good game, but uh but on its own, neither of those two parts are like mind bending. Yeah. I I honest I thought both sides of the game were actually fairly weak mm. on their own and I thought it made the game come out to kind of just a mediocre <laughs> mm. thing. Okay. Instead. All right. Um I you know, it's like <clears throat> and talking about talking about this with a few other folks i think that ultimately uh just neither parts of the game are that deep and that's fine and i don't mm -hmm. think it makes it a bad game but uh as much as, as you know even y'all said like it seems like this is the kind of game like oh this game seems like it would be for kevin uh what i the conclusion i walked away from was that uh this i don't think this game is for me actually mm. i think it's for for people that want a little bit of a of a cozier experience, as weird as it sounds, with the game's sort of vibe. Oh yeah, yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah. Well, I wanted to I wanted to start with the base building because I think that that's um that kind of I think I mean a I think I I was doing that most of the time. I think you know seventy five percent of my gameplay was actually just like running around the base. Um, I want to start with that, and then like roguelike is how you like on the yeah the roguelike running around the dungeons like that's how you unlock things, and so that's kind of a little bit how you progress. Um, 
So yeah, I just wanted to start with uh, base building stuff. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Go for it. What uh, uh, just for funsies? Did anybody did anybody have a naming convention for how they named their cultists? I just went with whatever I, they gave me. Yeah, I, I used the I used the pre generated name, and if it was particularly stupid, then I hit the dice button a few times until mm -hmm. I got one that I didn't think was super stupid. Yeah, okay. I just made sure none of them were too similar. Honestly, yeah. yeah, that was the biggest thing. I was like, oh, that's like one syllable off from this other guy. And yeah, I exactly. These guys if one guy's Borgdorg and another guy's Borfdorf, like I don't want to be if and one of them stirring up trouble you know descent or something i don't yeah. want to be like ah which one was it again i just want to know <clears throat> so like both visually and name wise i'm just like oh trying to make them as individualistic as possible yeah yeah oh god i had a few instances where i had a i just like wasn't paying attention i ended up with two like that had the same look and that yeah sucked. and then i'm like yes. oh, god. it was like oh, i have to kill one of you now yeah which one of you is <laughs> mad at me yeah or which one of you do i need to go bury yeah <clears throat> yeah um i usually I, you know yeah go ahead i usually try and like i i usually do like a naming convention um so like and and it's usually very dehumanizing where it's like like alpha bravo charlie like just like the like the alphabet mm -hmm. or something um, but I was, and I don't know if it was, was a Steam Deck problem or, um, uh, just like a, you know, or, you know, the first few days of the game problem, but, um, none of the names would save. Um, so like, yeah, I would constantly be like, I would just be like alpha and then like, you know, I'd, I'd back out and then it'd go back to like whatever it was, or it would like save for just that time. And then when I exited and reloaded, like they would have again, the random cultist name, um, a little upset yeah i was a little upset with that and then like i slowly started realizing like because they hot fixed it like two or three times um between like day one and you know the end of the two weeks that i played the game but uh yeah so little little annoyed at that um in that you know you're trying to sell me on a game where you know i can have relationships with these cultists but i can't give them individual names so yeah just a little frustrating part um yeah yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I also I I found the cultists, and I think this is by design very disposable. Um, yeah, you know, there wasn't there was like maybe one that I was like, oh, you have you have good traits, I'll keep you alive. And uh, other than that, like you know, and that's that's by design, I think. But it also yeah. meant that like you know, I'm not getting warm fuzzies with these guys like i am with my animal crossing villagers or something yeah oh, and i didn't i never hmm. felt anything when it's like oh you know this one is leaving or this one i have to kill or like it was just like yeah they're yeah. just a resource yeah and i think you know yeah. that's by design i think that's sure. you know the game systems very much encourage you i swear there's a tool tip that just is like your villagers are a resource spend yeah. them as though you would you know it's yeah. like and that's that's fine, but definitely a little different than I was expecting. Um, I yeah, I felt a little bit more. I liked, I kind of liked my cultists a little bit more than I liked like my Animal Crossing villagers, in that like I had more autonomy over which ones stuck around and which ones, um, you know, I killed off true. or whatever. Um, and if I could eventually name them, like that had, you know, yeah, I just had a little bit more control over who stayed around, and so like, uh, as soon as I could get. Um, as soon as I could get like the necromancy ritual, like I just had that one that was like, "Okay, you're dead. You're, you're coming back to life. You've been dead for two seconds." Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, I had that one that like my now level, we're into my yeah yeah my first pain point. Uh, I didn't take the bring back the dead ritual mm. uh, initially when I was playing, and okay, the other one first of all sucks, and also <clears throat> like then you have like no autonomy to to like keep cultists around uh, uh, like the fact that they die of old age if you, means like if you don't take the raised dead ritual then like they, your best cultists just die and they're gone and yeah. like, you can't do anything about it yeah. and it's like all right well i guess now i really don't care about these guys oh sure uh, interesting I, yeah yeah i honestly i the raised dead like I I figured it out early enough. I legit I 
I quit and start over and took the raised dead ritual because oh, wow. I wow. realized I felt kneecapped without it. Um, and, you know, I don't think that that's necessarily like you don't need it to enjoy the game, but I was kind of like uh, the, the highest it, level I'm going to be able to get a villager before they die of old age is like level six or seven, probably. Yeah, yeah I feel like it should just be one of the things you're able to do. Yeah, like yeah. it should be like rituals an unlock that thing. It should be yeah. like a thing you can do when you build a certain. Yeah, there's a bunch of thing. them that aren't tied to the, uh, you know, the, the trees and don't have like a an either or choice associated with them. And I really think that Raised Dead should have been, yeah, one of those. Um, also, the the other one, like the the burial ritual that you get instead of it, is not like, doesn't do very much. Uh, it's just like another way to to get rid of bodies. Ah, uh, basically. Yeah, well, and I think like I don't know. I, I guess I didn't try a bunch of different like you know builds or playthroughs or whatever. But it's like I don't know. It was hard to tell. Like, am I making a good choice? Is this mm-hmm. the right way yeah. to go? Like, does does this matter even? Like, yeah, yeah. It was really you know, hard to get a sense of that. Yeah, and you know, at first I was kind of frustrated because I, yeah, I couldn't tell what would be good or useful, especially early on in the game when when you're making some of these choices. And then the conclusion I reached as I got into the later parts of the game was that it really didn't matter. (laughs) And like, you can kind of just ignore your villagers and and plow through everything as long as you're getting your unlocks and stuff. And Yeah. yeah, you'll get them like slightly faster, but once you get towards the later parts of the game, you're going to kind of unlock everything anyway. <laughs> so <clears throat> it's just like getting things a little bit faster if you micromanage your villagers and really try to min-max their output. Um, yeah. And, and it becomes unwieldy, too. It like freaking, like, you can't be dancing with your villagers every day if oh there's 20 of them or whatever. So. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it just becomes like, super unwieldy. The, yeah, the like individual interactions and yeah, the little like I have to watch this little dancing animation to boost their faith and everything. Yeah, yeah. it was a uh, that definitely be felt pretty grindy if I wanted to like really efficiently get villagers leveled up and stuff. Yeah, that's why I don't really. Oh, yeah, like... and it's just like not really fun. You're not doing anything. You know. Yeah. No, you're just... you're, you're just running around hitting menus and it's like. Mm. Yeah, yep. like if there was like a little mini game to it, even just like some button presses or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, even something as simple as the cooking or something. Yeah, just yeah. Like a little exactly. like timing game. Give me, yeah, give me something to do so I'm not just like staring at, like I'm just sitting here waiting for an animation to finish to go start another animation. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Any uh, um any particular like base layout you guys did? I didn't realize. I didn't realize like. To group my matter. farms for yeah, yeah yeah mostly it didn't really uh, matter but like to group really, your farms together didn't really matter it took me a long time to realize to figure out how to move buildings too so I kind of just sp- by the time I learned how to do that I didn't I was like yeah no oh, I um I still don't know I, how to move buildings yeah it's like an option in the build menu it's kind of hard to ah, find um, okay and. Ultimately, like you, you say, grouping farms. I only ever had one farm, and I never felt like I needed another one. Mm. Um, weirdly enough, like one plot or like one. Like, no, like one. Uh, oh, with the shack. Yeah, one shack, down. and then I just yeah, and then I just had all of the all the patches dug out around it. And like, Interesting. I felt like I was constantly. I feel like I constantly didn't have enough food. I, I ran into that early in the game. Um, but I don't know. I just, I never, like, my guys were never starving. I took the ritual where they don't have to eat every once in a while, like every, uh-huh. every like, three days. So that cut okay. down on okay. the whole food. Okay. I also, like, uh, I don't know. I guess I just took a lot of the food <clears throat> reward options when I was out in the adventure mode, too. Mm. See, I felt like, so this is one of my biggest issues with the games i feel like when i went out into adventure i felt like i hardly ever saw like because i don't know if it's just like a roll of the dice or what but like i very rarely would get food runs Uh uh-huh yeah i think it's just random but uh... it was like i was getting so i was getting i remember like at one point and this was somewhat early in the game but i was like 
my villagers were starving. I only had like three like berry bushes planted. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I got, so I was going on runs like specifically, like, I hope I can find food. And it was like three runs in a row. It was just like wood. Huh. And I was like, oh my God, I need food. Give me food. Yeah. But in the end, it's also still like, here's more cultists. And I'm like, no, I can't feed them. Like, yeah. <laughs> I it, need food. It's so yeah. It's if you're not paying, it's really easy to accumulate. Frankly, too many cultists very quickly. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't realize early on. I was like, oh, I should probably like maybe say no to some mm-hmm. of these, as opposed sure. to just being like more is better. Yeah. But you know, like you have to sort of learn that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I thought that was kind of like the the pace of the game was like, you know, expend all of your resources, like feeding and upgrading stuff. And that's what yeah. you go out of the adventure mode. But I agree. Like if, if my only source for food was the adventure, definitely run out very quick. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I think I also, I felt like I always had a lot of money, so I just would buy mm. seeds. Uh, sure. If I, if that, I was running yeah. low. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, one nice thing I will say about the game is I think that um, the loop where you you do a bunch of stuff in your base and you expend all your resources and then, like, there's sort of a natural point where you're like, all right, I need to go out and adventure again. That loop felt pretty well considered and tuned to me. Yeah. And I, I did kind of, I liked the push and pull between those two kind of game modes. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't ever, you know, I guess it's frustrating if you're going out and trying to find food and just not finding it. I was lucky enough to not have that Yeah, I think that was just an unlucky yeah, like, but, uh, role. Yeah, probably. But uh, overall, like, I liked the push and pull between the two modes. Uh, I wish I found those modes more engaging. Mm. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so... Yeah, we could switch over to the uh, the roguelike <clears throat> adventure mode, I guess. What? Uh, yeah. yeah. What? Uh, what did we feel about about that portion of it? Um. Well, I'll I'll say before Kevin gets in because I know he has. I got feelings. Yeah, yeah he's got feelings on this. <laughs> um, and honestly, I think I'm largely going to agree with him because I love the way this game looks first of all i just want to say that like exploring the world like you know like going through and doing everything was really cool and i liked um yeah i just liked so much about what it looked like and the the way it felt like besides the actual like control of it yeah i loved running into like the cool like fortune teller and so like mm-hmm. the way they they talked you know oh yeah yeah the world the sound design and everything is so good sound design the character design the way that each of the characters are animated is really charming it's mm-hmm. there's god some of the stuff it's like it's just funny too yeah, like, it's, yeah it's vaguely so creepy yeah yeah it's it's like the the art direction the sort of aesthetic pull of this game is really really exceptional yeah it's but then you try to fight something oh my god um (laughs) yeah Um, so yeah i think i just like ultimately i didn't think the combat was very fun i just Mm. i just didn't have a good time doing it like i'd say a majority of the time no matter what like weapon or power i was wielding it, everything felt i felt kind of not floaty but i just didn't feel like i was really in tune with my character i felt like i was rolling like all over the screen and like losing track of like what was happening and then mm-hmm. like as I, i'm sure as kevin will mention it then it would be like there would be slow down when enough things were happening yes going yeah. on on the screen and it's just yeah there's just a certain point where I realized, like, I really liked the chillness of the base building aspect, you know, 
and yeah. it was I wish it was a bit deeper, but I enjoyed, you know, what it was. And but then I'd be like, ah, I have to go out and like do stuff now. Okay, let's go. <laughs> yeah, it's uh first of all, yeah, I'll just get this out of the way right now. Like I I've heard from people that play on other platforms that this is also the case and the game should probably just needs to be optimized a bit better. Mm-hmm. But like I emphatically recommend against getting this game on Switch. Um, ah. it was yeah. a stuttery mess for me. Uh especially in the adventure modes where like any number of any anything beyond like a moderate amount of stuff is happening on the screens. Like the boss fights, I swear I'm getting like nine frames a second on a lot of these things like oh, dear you know, god it's it was miserable um i also had a few run ending bugs which is eventually what stopped me from completing the game oh uh, I, had, I had i had at least one hard crash i i hard crashed a couple times and then i uh at the end of the basically i was like i was in i was at the point where i was on my way i was on my run to kill the fourth boss Mm-hmm. Um, and I had this thing where, like, one of the spider enemies would just, like, go into the corner of one of the maps and start, like, freaking out like it was getting hit repeatedly, but I couldn't hit it, which meant oh, wow. that I couldn't kill the last enemy in the room, which meant <coughs> I was just stuck in that room. Oh, God. And the only wow. way that I could figure out to get around that was to quit, and then I had to start the run over again. So I start right. my run over again, and I'm like, "Oh, okay, cool. I got a better weapon this time. Uh, the the cards I'm I'm getting are better. This maybe I'll have a better time with the boss." And, and then it happens again, in the same way. Oh my okay. god! And then I turned off the game, and I haven't turned the game back on again because well, yeah, that yeah, was fair enough. really frustrating. Um, so you know, getting that out of the way. <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'll talk more about the actual. Uh, gameplay now but yeah like that was really really frustrating <laughs> um how long ago was that uh last weekend okay yeah you know and i i'm sure they're going to continue to patch it i'm sure the game will get better optimized over time yeah. i i don't know it's harder to recommend any getting any games on switch uh that are newer <laughs> point yeah I feel like a lot of games just don't run well on switch anymore yeah um, and it's it really is like a tragedy because there's no reason that game shouldn't no that was why switch. i got yeah. really like i was kind of like ah oh, well look at this game it does it there's no way it can be that demanding i'm sure the switch can handle it and i'm still pretty sure the switch can handle it but not in the state that uh i was playing it in <laughs> uh so you know yeah and, i mean even on the Steam, I was playing, I played 100% on the Steam Deck, which I think this is, I get Steam Deck ratings, it's like yellow for, um, but not 100%. <clears throat> and I had I had small issues with um, small text, like the text would be optimized for a PC, but I'm playing on a deck, so like it would be super tiny. Um, and then, yeah, like there was times where I was cooking, like I could only cook at night towards the end of the game because that was the only time that like my characters weren't up and animated and all that kind of stuff. So like I had enough processing power to be able to do the freaking quick time oh events my oh like, my God. to cook. Like the only, yeah, I, the only way I, I could, I, yeah. I did also have some stuttering on <clears throat> quick time events. For this yeah. That made me burn food every once in a while when I shouldn't have. Yeah. But interesting uh, that you had that issue on the deck too. Yeah. Um, so I guess, yeah, again, not optimized for the platform as much, but. Yeah, so, so that was a bummer. Um, yeah, but um, move, moving beyond those issues, uh, so roguelike games. Um, the thing that keeps I am a big fan of roguelike games. I adore them for the most part, and the thing that I find most compelling about roguelike games is that one more run. Feeling. And what makes mm-hmm. you want to have one more run is that the upgrades that you get in a roguelike game 
are supposed to change the way that you play and interact with the run. Mm. Um, and I don't think that that happens in this game. And yep. uh, yeah. I, I thought that the items that you get, the weapons that you find and unlock, they're all very samey, very boring. Nothing made me change the way that I play the game when I picked it up. Um, everything just made me like hit a little harder or, oh, now I do a poison when I hit you. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, this one, this, this dagger has a chance to do the big damage when I hit you. Um, and, you know, it's like you can get some things that synergize and stuff, but there was nothing that was like, you know, talk about Binding of Isaac. Every once in a while in Binding of Isaac, you just luck into this combination of items that makes you shoot six lasers out of your face and kill everything in every room you enter all the time. Yeah, and you know that's like very rare, but it's fun when it happens, mm -hmm. and you know that's the magic. And, yeah, and there uh, that magic was completely absent from mm -hmm. this. I it's yeah, it's like I don't know, it's it's barely a roguelike to me. It's more of just in, like an adventure mode. Yeah, with some you know with some randomized pickups and stuff. Uh, yeah, well, and even then, I didn't think that just like the very most basic components of the combat felt good. Yeah. That's it was the other really element. hard to. I just didn't feel like I was, like, oh, I know where I'm. I don't know. I didn't feel like okay, here I am. Yeah. I know exactly like which direction I'm facing and attacking. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, the yeah. combat didn't feel tight. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're constantly whiffing attacks. You're constantly dodging like <clears> further <throat> than it feels like you should be dodging. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. Maybe yeah. part of that is because my frames are stuttering all over the place sometimes. Um, <laughs> the dodge is crazy. Like I, I like having a dodge, but yeah, like I feel <clears> like <throat> I was just dodging across the entire length of the room every time I dodged. Yeah. And then I'm yeah. like, well, wait, where am I? Because like we all kind of look like the same cute little whatever. And then yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Ultimately. All of that to say it resulted in the the adventure runs that I had to go through to, you know, that, that are sort of the, like, the objective of a game is to kill the bosses. Uh, yeah. You know, it's like everything you're doing is kind of in service of, of accomplishing that goal, and it felt like they were chores that I had to do. <laughs> yeah. You know, it felt like it was kind of like, oh, I have to go out and, and do another yeah. run before I can... You know, so that my villagers don't starve, <laughs> or something yeah. like that. You know, it's like it's not because it's like, all oh, right, I'm ready. I I hope I get. You know, I can't wait to see what weapon I start with this time. You know. It's... Yeah, exactly. Because like I never care. It's like it doesn't matter which weapon I start with. I don't like any of them. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I almost felt. <clears throat> I almost felt when like when you're. That when you're upgrading like the weapon choices or whatever, I was like, as soon as I got vampiric, I was like. This is the only weapon type like I, I usually ever want to get. Necromatic stuff was kind of cool with the ghosts that like shot out. But uh Yeah. But I mean, A, the like proc was like the trigger was like rare. Um and like yeah. like way too rare. Uh and and like B was um was like okay, but as I increase the pool, I'm getting more and more shit that I don't care about. Like I don't even remember what Merciless did, and it was just like, how can I like just stop progression but that doesn't yeah. seem like the right thing to do. Well, yeah. and the the dumbest thing I think is like you get to the end <clears> and you unlock the godly weapons, and their whole thing is they just do like twice as much damage as the other weapons. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, neat. You kind of just want to get one of those. Yeah. Because then you can kill everything a lot faster. Yeah. Um. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. Again, it's just like and. That coupled with sort of the, you know, the the quote unquote roguelike power ups you get are the tarot cards, yeah, which are I feel like equally boring. Half of them are just like you get a heart, yeah, it's like, yes. But you know, yeah. it's like it's all boring stuff. Like you you do point two five percent more damage now, yeah. You can crit, you know, on twelve percent of the time now. Oh, great. yeah. Yeah, and it's like yeah, those things can all stack, and you do get more powerful as you accumulate them. But like, it's not exciting to get any of those. <laughs> They're no. just like, it's honestly the strategy is just like yeah, you want as many tarot cards as you can get because there's no limit to how many you can carry. 
and so you just try and stack as many of these sort of boring passive buffs as you can so that you're generically stronger by the time you get to the boss and then you kill the boss well speaking of like <clears throat> the first fleece i unlocked was the one that just like gave you four tarot cards up front yeah. and i like and then i like you know slowly unlocked more and i was like but my i want my i mean it, it's a little bit like yeah deterministic where like okay now i know exactly what this run's gonna feel like but no but it's, it's also it's like super helpful information to be like okay am, yeah or or you know because i could just randomly miss a tarot card if i don't have that ability and like yeah, yeah no and, <clears throat> and it's not consistent how many tarot cards you'll get in a run it's all yeah rolled dice roll randomness so i i agree i also used that fleece a lot because a lot of times I wouldn't see four tarot cards in my run and guaranteeing yeah. it and starting the run basically at full strength yeah. meant it was frankly easier to speed run through them. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, same. <laughs> also, most of the other fleets are useless and I don't want to use them ever. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. I just want, I, yeah, I guess I just, I think overall, I don't know how much thought was put into all of these like power ups. It like doesn't just, feel like like on yeah. paper it was like oh maybe it does this and it's like yeah maybe but like when you played it were you like yeah this is awesome or like you know yeah or it's just like oh that's a good that's a power up it's like right. somebody just wrote like a list of of all of the stats that they use to keep track of what the lamb can do and then they're like well this one will make that more yeah this one will make yeah that also well, that feels feels bad when you're unlocking new tarot cards to add to your pool and half of them are like, you run faster. It's like, I don't want that to go in my pool. What? I want to get that over the one that makes me hit harder. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm just diluting my, the pool of potential buffs I can get. To be <clears> yeah. <throat> or and like, or you get the, the, state of the game. Far. There's kind of an issue with like, well, okay. I don't know if I want that like thing where like it shoots stuff out to proc more because then my game's going to go slower. Oh, no yeah. Fight. Ooh, that's, that's even worse, yeah. Or you just unlock the like the ten percent better card, but now both are still in the pool, and it's like, shouldn't? Yeah. Can't I just have like, like have that replace or like replace like, or yeah? Or like <clears throat> no, I feel like maybe maybe at some point there was like a deck building mechanic that would be kind of interesting if you could like yeah. put a certain number in a deck that you could then draw from. I don't know. Sure. It just felt like again, it felt like a little half baked i think like just not quite as much design time went into the thought of these power-ups as i would have hoped and expected yeah and i just i, I guess i don't know much about the developer and because yeah. i just i just sort of wonder like how much like experience do they have with sure. yeah i suppose combat design yeah that's fair enough but i mean also if they're you know i, I feel like it yeah, I, I guess I don't know too much about the developer, and but I mean clearly they've played Binding of Isaac. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, were there any <clears throat> any of the like special abilities that people had a particular fondness for, or oh, the the spells? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I tended to just like the big tentacle one because, as far as I could tell, that did the most damage. Mm. <laughs> uh, you know, it was sort of. I I found a lot of the spells kind of similar to the weapons, kind of samey and not very useful. Yeah, yeah. Any of the, like the knockback ones, like just did an AOE around you. Like if you just uh, lost track of yourself uh, for two seconds, it was just like. Also, getting like never understanding like the weapon arc ranges meant like I never knew if I was like too close, but could still do this aoe thing um, yeah the the like radial burst spells are god those are so bad i avoided them at all cost um, i did like i'm eventually learning that you could hold like if you had any like the grenade like spells if you hold it down yeah. like it slows down i was like okay now i know that like i can take my time rather than just like running around like with it with my head cut off like Trying to just yeah. like spam this grenade ability. Yeah, I am. I mean, I think they'd be unusable without that. Oh, sure. Play. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So any, anytime I like randomized into 
Like, I get more fervor, and I have a bigger fervor pool, and, you know, maybe I have the, like, the uh, demonic companion who, like, goes and fetches more fervor or something like that, yeah. or automatically picks it up. It was like, if I had that plus, you know, heat-seeking missiles, yep. it was just like, okay, this runs face-rolling easy, so. Yeah, the missile swarm. And again, it's like, it's like it's it's almost like a combination like that. Like it's almost one of those things where it's like, okay, I have an overpowered run. <clears throat> yeah. It's still kind of unexciting in a way that like finding combinations in some of these other roguelikes isn't. You know. Yeah. But yeah, I agree. I mean, the heat seeking, like the the like seeker swarm spell was very strong. <laughs> it did a lot of damage. If yeah. Know. If you hit like a boss with all of them, or something. when you get to the the final boss, it was just like like you 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 just st- you finally get a choice, which is awesome. Uh, it's slightly spoilery, but you finally get a choice. Like there's like I can guess, <laughs> yeah. But you get there's like a choice. You get three items. You know, you get your choice of like which of these three weapons do you want? Which of these three spells do you want? Um, so it's like okay, now I have a little bit more autonomy on like how this run's gonna be. Um, and then you you do the boss fight, and it was like, okay, I'm instantly going to the heat seeking missiles swarm spell. And then, um, for some reason, I found a I had a fondness for like the gauntlets, maybe because oh, I could really? like <clears throat> I could like I would like spam because it's like the the a like there's a whole combo system which I didn't quite understand in the game, but like with the gauntlets, it was like it was like an A B C combo, and then. Like I would just stand in the corner doing A and B, and then freaking like turn around and press yeah. C, and then just like wipe the whole room basically. Yeah. C so wrecks everything. Yeah, That's, yeah. Very true. And not interesting though. But yeah. Yeah, exactly. And you know, similar. Like I, I found I, I felt like they were rarer than the other ones, but I found I really liked the hammers. Mm. Um, just because. Oh man. Because I could charge them up and walk up and swing and do a huge chunk and then immediately dodge after and then just do that over and over again and uh <laughs> they the would die was... very fast I thought, I thought it was slow for like the, the minions running around it is but it's splash when it hits down is so big that you don't need um, to be anywhere near them to hit them oh, nice. <laughs> it hits like a quarter of the area when you swing with those things okay and they just do they like one shot <clears throat> everything almost oh so. cool they do so much damage, I assume, because they're so slow. But yeah, I think it was also partly like I found the faster weapons really annoying because I found it really hard to gauge when I was going to hit things. And, yeah. Uh, and at least you know, with the axe and the hammer, I could kind of just swing in the general direction of the thing and be pretty sure I was going to hit them for a lot of damage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like the axe as like the middle ground. Yeah, I was fine with yeah. like the with the gauntlets, but like I like the middle ground and like of the axe and a little bit more less less yeah restrictive. Axe was good. Uh, the biggest one was just getting getting a dagger was kind of a bummer. Yeah, <laughs> I had a few good runs with a dagger, but like uh, you just take so much damage because you you have to get so close to the enemies. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, we did talk a little bit about the pacing, but one of the things that I just wanted to cover off on, we talked about, like, the game loop, and I, I liked, like, the push and pull there. Yeah. Um, but the one thing, like, unlocks, like, I felt like maybe in Area 2, I was, like, 90% done with unlocks, which feels like a weird pacing issue. You mean, like, uh... Like, the faith-based, like, even, like, oh. buildings, and, like, even, like, some yeah. of the like unlocking some of the weapons maybe yeah, that's by I, uh, design but maybe i i did find i maxed the like weapon upgrade <clears throat> tree like the you know the i forget what each one is called but yeah the one that you do in in the church church um, yeah i maxed that one out very early and then the buildings took me a little longer but mm. not like i was still like by the time i got to the about halfway through the third area i felt like i had everything and i was i sort of hit a point where i was like well i guess i just have to try and 
finish the game now. <laughs> yeah. I have like everything exactly. unlocked and I still feel like there's a lot of a lot of adventure mode runs ahead of me yes. to actually get through these bosses. Um so yeah. <laughs> that was kind of a weird revelation. And then um, I sprinted through until my game crashed twice and that threw my hands up. Yeah, I think like the fourth area just felt like do a run, complete the mini boss, do the run, <laughs> complete the like it was just yeah. very like chory, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so like here everybody at the base eat some mushrooms and don't eat for a few days. I'll be back when I've killed this this mini these mini bosses several times. Yeah. <laughs> um do we have any particular opinions on like each of the different world types how do we feel about those I like the adventure mode and then also like or uh there was different areas you go to in the overworld i guess i liked yeah. that there was an overworld that, yeah. that added to sort of the charm mm -hmm. of it all yeah i mean i think again like one of the strongest parts about the game is the way it looks and the way the characters move and sort of animate and stuff and yeah I liked, you know, there's like a bunch of goofy ass characters that, that you can wander around the world and interact with and stuff, and they're all, they're all pretty fun and charming and weird looking, <laughs> you know. So I yeah. enjoyed that. I think the uh, the dice rolling game just was more of an annoyance rather than like, because <laughs> yeah. money money wasn't an issue after, yeah, Act One or whatever. So it was like, yeah. why would Especially I be doing this for a long time? Yeah, especially once you get the ability to turn resources into money if you ever run low. It's like, oh, yeah. oh I'm never out of money. <laughs> yeah, I just sell I, off I all to, my I wood go, or whatever. Yeah, I can go sell like 100 wood and bam, I have money again. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, I like yeah, the design it, of this, the spider area. And then the, yeah, the, the last two, like the spider area and the, and the area, I thought like looked very cool. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it, it's, again, a testament to, to how good the game looks. I thought the environments were very, like, looked pretty neat, too. You know, the, yeah. the rooms were pretty pretty similar looking the whole way through, but it was a nice thing to look similar as. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, yeah, I, I, I quite liked the, the underwater area, and, yeah. Not too much to say there, really. Um... How do we feel about boss fights and and, uh, and like the mini bosses and stuff like that? Um, we're fine. Kind of reminded me of Binding of Isaac bosses in a lot of way. Um, in what way? Less, less random. Just like big enemy hops around area, shoots bullet hell shit at you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did like the. I did like the like mini boss to boss structure in that like the mini bosses would teach you like one of four mechanics that you'll need to use for the boss. So like that was kind of helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, this mini boss summons, you know, owls. Okay, now I'll need to know how to like you know, interact with those owls or whatever. Oh, this mini boss yeah, does an AoE kinda... bullet hell thing. That's true. It was kind of nice that there were like elements of the bigger boss. Um, I guess, yeah, I almost feel like using the word mechanic is too generous a word. Oh, but, sure. But yes, I've seen all these yeah. attacks and I know kind of how they're dodged. Yeah, I know how these are telegraphed and how they, yeah. how they go. Well, cool. That's kind of all I had. Do we have any other topics of conversation before we jump into final thoughts? Uh, let's see. Um, I do. I do want to just like say some more because, like, yeah, I don't know how great this game is as like a as a game, but there's so much charm in it that it's like mm -hmm. I, I also. I don't want to say that I don't recommend it necessarily if they can fix it. Yeah. Because yeah. oh man, it is fun to like run your cult and like the little I there's so many little things I enjoy like picking up 
poop and <laughs> you and then using it and and like when you follow that you can tell when they have to go poop because they go walk off to be alone and it's kind of like squint and like eh, and then it pops yeah. out like it's <laughs> yeah, it's adorable it's, it's oozing with charm yeah. yes absolutely like it's, it's uh, i think it's almost worth checking out for that alone um but yeah i think you just have to really temper your yeah. fear expectations i i absolutely agree with you and i you know i've been pretty hard on this game but that's not to say that i that i don't recommend it just maybe don't get it on switch but uh you know like it comes back to what i said at the beginning is like it seemed like this game would be something that i would really gel with and i just i don't think it was really a game for me as like a fan of of more sophisticated roguelikes and more mm. sophisticated management sims. Um, but you know, if, if you don't, if you're not like as into that, if you're more of like, if you're coming from animal crossing and want something just a little like, yes. edgier, like, you know, That's if you're like kind of a real, totally it. I don't want to use the word casual. And when I say it, I don't mean it like derisively or anything, but if that's kind of more of your vibe, then this is, a, this is a great, option because it's, it's yeah it's it really... is less intense in yeah. a way than most both management sims and uh Rogue 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 yeah. yeah very much yeah I, I think you pegged it kevin with like it is definitely a cozy game so like everything's a little bit lighter and like you know Maybe this is someone's stepping stone into like maybe a harder roguelike game or maybe even harder base building games. But like, yeah, it's definitely not in either of those two arenas. It's in the like cozy game arena that has light base building and roguelike elements. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. If it no, falls into that area a, more. Yeah, it's meant to, you know, my some of my frustrations aside, it's meant to be a fairly frictionless experience. And uh yeah. You know, so I, I think in, and there's a lot of, you know, there's there's a lot of people that that appeals to and stuff. It's just not really my vibe. Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of respect. It's like, it's, you know, good, good job, game developers. I'm not like. <laughs> sure. You, you made a good game and I know that the reviews are really strong and I'm sure they're making a lot of money. So good for them. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, let's uh, put a bow on it. Uh, do we want to give kind of final thoughts? Sure. Yeah, hey, go for it, Kevin. Cool. Um, you know, I think a lot of it was summed up with in sort of that last discussion we had. But again, uh, as a as a sort of a more hardcore fan of, especially you know, roguelikes and things like like Binding of Isaac and stuff, um, I kind of came away realizing that this wasn't really what I was looking for. But that doesn't mean that it won't be what other people are looking for. And I think it's a great sort of more accessible, you know, entry point into some of these some of these ideas um, and game types. And it's absolutely oozing with charm and the, the look and the way the characters move and everything is an absolute delight. And honestly, the game is almost worth playing just to experience those. Um, issues that I have with the with the game systems, notwithstanding. So, uh, yeah, kind of a mixed feelings for me. I don't think I'll come back to it, but you know, don't don't let that dissuade you if it sounds like something that would be up your alley. <laughs> Great. What are your final thoughts, Patrick? Yeah, I think ultimately, yeah, this game wasn't for me either. But it's so. It's so charming and so cute and so like there's so many good qualities about it, and I think ultimately what I found is like I wanted I liked the management aspect of it, and the and the cozy management aspect of it with sort of the like tongue in cheek dark god <laughs> cult mm -hmm. stuff that mm -hmm. I realized like that's what I wanted I want I just want that I didn't want to play I didn't want to like do the roguelike elements because. I liked this. I thought this other stuff was so much more like, I don't know. I don't even know if like fun is the right word, but it was just like, I wanted to be around like these cultists and I just wanted to be managing them. But then ultimately I just didn't end up being deep enough to like just mm -hmm. focus on it. I don't know. 
I want I want another I want a sequel to this game or like a side game where it's like this world, but it's just a cult management sim. Mm. That's what I want. Okay. And it's like deeper and it's just got more going on for it there. Yeah. <clears throat> I feel like following up on that a little bit, I feel like that was more of what was marketed than the yes. kind of roguelike elements. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so, I, I think that is the stronger side of the game. So you know, smart of yeah. them to put that kind of forward. Yeah. Um, my final thoughts. Um, I liked the kind of, like Kevin said, push and pull of of like doing the base building until you run out of resources or upgraded stuff, and then going in or jumping the roguelike. Um, I think this might be the first roguelike that I have finished because um, I usually don't I- like beating my head against something and not making a lot of progress. Um, not that there was much progress to be unlocked with a oh, boss fight Casey, in this game, but... Uh... Casey, you don't play roguelikes to finish <laughs> them. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they never finish. Oh, that's, that's the that's point, the yeah. Point. Yeah. I guess I, th- I said that to a coworker, and they were like, Slay the Spire? And I was like, okay, I beat a run as Slay the Spire, but like that's not... Yeah, you, you yeah. beat runs, but you yeah. don't like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't win. What? Yeah. I want to wow. win! um so yeah i liked i liked um i found i found the the base building or at least interacting with my cultists was compelling for um for a while until i unlocked everything and then it it just felt like the roguelike portion was like a a chore because i unlocked everything already um uh yeah and i liked yeah i really liked the i agree with patrick i really liked the kind of managing of my cult portion of it and running around and collecting poop and grass and <laughs> yeah you know i had another thought it's sort of like if you come at this game and you want a better roguelike i have a list a mile long of things i could recommend to you uh-huh. if you come at it and you want something like the way that it does the cult management i don't really have a lot of other suggestions for you so you know hmm. take from that what you will too like there's other management sims and stuff but nothing that is quite like like this, like yeah. Animal Crossing adjacent kind of. It's right, kind of not as like cozy and adorable, but still has that tongue in cheek, like yeah, yeah, like sort of macabre vibe, you know. Yeah, like I want that now. Like now that I've tasted that, and you know, I didn't quite get my fill. I'm like, I'm hungry for that now. So yeah, somebody make that, <laughs> or tell it. me, tell me a game that is that. That's and just, just cozy. Uh, yeah, a cozy yeah. cult sim. There's yeah, a, yeah. I'm, I'm sure there's a couple of of them out there probably that just haven't crossed my radar or something. But sure. but maybe not. I don't know. <clears throat> um, yeah. Ultimately, do, do, do look up Bloody Hell Hotel. <laughs> that's a, it's not out yet, but yes. That's oh a, yeah, yeah. That's on spooky, my wish list. Spooky hotel management game. Yeah. 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 I'm ready anyway, for that. It seems like it's kind of a similar energy, but you know, again, kind of a yeah tongue-in-cheek that's exactly what management i have high hopes for it so well yeah same i'm yeah that one's on my radar for sure tim burton-esque uh art style very yeah very burton-esque yeah um yeah yeah, i liked the kind of i i enjoyed kind of both sides of the coin so ultimately i i think um yeah i enjoyed i enjoyed it as a whole and there were some parts that felt chory and i think the pacing was a little off but um but yeah i uh I enjoyed Cult of the Lamb. Um, having having uh, finished it, I you know I had the the I had the idea of like, would I replay it? Were my choices were my choices so you know game breaking or or profound that like I want to do something else? And the only thing I found that I like I would potentially replay it for is just a different layout for my base. But I don't know how much that really affects like the overall gameplay experience. So. It, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Especially now that I know that you can move stuff around. Like, I would have done that. <laughs> yeah, they they really... That should have been part of the tutorial or something. <laughs> yeah. Because, um, yeah, it took me a long time and, and, a, and a couple Google searches before I realized you could do that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, Definitely didn't play out. <clears throat> but, uh, but, yeah, thanks, thanks, friends, for talking about Cult of the Lamb. 
Yeah. And most of all, thank you. <laughs> I hope you enjoy this content. And if you do, follow, like, and subscribe to me on YouTube and Twitch. You can see more great content like this. I'll have links down below in the description. Thanks again. I hope you have a super day. I hope you have a super month. And I hope you have a super day. Bye.